Probably a lot of you know the story of the two salesmen who went down to Africa in the 1900s. They were sent down to find if there was any opportunity for selling shoes. And they wrote telegrams back to Manchester. And one of them wrote, Situation hopeless. Stop. They don't wear shoes. And the other one wrote, Glorious opportunity. They don't have any shoes yet. Now, there's a similar situation in the classical music world, because there are some people who think that classical music is dying, and there are some of us who think you ain't seen nothing yet. And rather than go into statistics and trends and tell you about all the orchestras that are closing and the record companies that are folding, I thought we should do an experiment tonight. An experiment. Actually, it's not really an experiment, because I know the outcome. But it's like an experiment. Now, before we, <laughs> before we start, I need to do two things. One is I want to remind you of what a seven-year-old child sounds like when he plays the piano. Maybe you have this child at home. He sounds something like this. Some of you recognize this child. Now, if he practices for a year and takes lessons, he's now eight and he sounds like this. And then he practices for another year and takes lessons, now he's nine. And then he practices for another year and takes lessons, now he's ten. At that point, they usually give up. <laughs> Now, if you'd, waited, if you'd waited for one more year, you would have heard this. Now, what happened was not maybe what you thought, which was he suddenly became passionate, engaged, involved, got a new teacher, he hit, hit puberty, or whatever it is. What actually happened was the impulses were reduced. You see, the first time he was playing with an impulse on every note. And the second, with an impulse every other note. You can see it by looking at my head. The th The nine-year-old nine put an impulse on every four notes. And the ten-year-old on every eight notes. And the eleven-year-old one impulse on the whole phrase. I, ne I don't know how I got into this position. <laughs> I didn't say I'm going to move my shoulder over, move my body. No, the music pushed me over, which is why I call it one buttock playing. Can be the other button. You know, a gentleman was once watching uh, a presentation I was doing, and I was working with a young pianist. He was the president of a corporation in Ohio. And I was working with this young pianist, and I said, The trouble with you is you're a two buttock player. You should be a one buttock player. And I moved his body like that while he was playing. And suddenly the music took off took flight. There was a gasp in the audience when they heard the difference. And then I got a letter from this gentleman. He said, I was so moved, I went back and I transformed my entire company into a one-butter company. 